Hi there and welcome to lesson 10 components. So in this lesson we're going to explore Protopy's implementation of components. As you can imagine it goes a little bit further than other tools such as Figma and Sketch and Adobe XD but also very similar to those tools as well. So this lesson and the final lesson is going to deal with two, two aspects of components. So in this lesson we're going to just look at how you create components and how you can reuse them. So, so what is a component? A component is a reusable piece of interface. So things you want to turn into components are things you're going to use a lot, like buttons, for example. So in this prototype we've got here in front of us, we've got this dialog box. It's got a button in it, and it's also got a text field in it. So you can imagine text fields and buttons are things that you might use quite a lot in, in your apps and you might want to be able to have some ready-made, ready-rolled components that you can just drag out and create stuff really quickly. So we're going to turn this dialog box into a set of components. So the first thing I want to show you is the components fly out. So the icon with the lightning bolt inside of it over here on the left of the screen is your components fly out. And you can see here, I've got a bunch of other libraries. That's another, that's another thing we're not gonna go into today, but effectively you can have all of your components inside of your local document. You can also create libraries of components as well and share them around. So we're gonna create some components in, inside, of this, inside of this flyout. Okay, so the first thing I just wanna take you through is just the structure of my graphics. So I've got this dialogue, which is just a regular protopy group. Inside of it, I've got a native text field, a native protopy text field. I've got two further groups, one for the text field item and one for the button item. And inside of these, these two, I've got an input field and inside of the button, I've just got a button text field. So the first thing you want to think about what, before you create components is constraints. So you don't need to make a component in Protopy to apply constraints. You can apply constraints to regular groups of things. So if I select my dialog at the top level, you can see I've got my constraints over here in the property details page. And there's two aspects to or two parts to constraints. There's the, the pinning side of things. So what side of the container do you want to pin your item to? And then you've also got the width and the height constraints. So you can either allow it to expand with its container or you can fix its width or fix its height. So for all of my objects, I've pinned them to the top and I've pinned them to the left. And then depending on what they are, I may have fixed their their, their width or their height. So for the container dialog, I'm just pinging it to the left and the top. If I open up and look at my text layer, I can see that I've also pinned it to the top and the left, but I've also made sure that the alignment is in the center. Okay, moving on to my text field, the group itself is pinned to the top and the left, and I've also fixed the height because I don't want the height of the text field to change. And then within that, I've got my actual input, which again, I've pinned to the top and the left and pinned the height. Finally, for the button, pinned the height and the left and also fixed the height. because again, I don't want the height of my button to change. And then finally, for the button label, I've also fixed the height and I've pinned it to the left-hand side. I could pin it to the top as well. And you just select these on and off. If they're blue, then, then you've got them switched on. Okay, so if I just grab my group at the top level and I start messing with the size of it, you can see that it's liquid, it's constrained, it's moving in the way that I want it to. And I want to give as much flexibility within my components so they can be used for all different shapes and sizes. Okay, so with our graphics already prepped, we can start making some components. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to make a component of is my text field. So I'm going to select the group in the layers panel. And there's a few ways I could make components. I can come up to this lovely component button in, in the top here and tap that. I can hover over the layer. I can right click and choose convert to component. 
I can also click it inside of the canvas and also choose convert to component. So let's just hit the component button with it selected obviously and see what happens. Okay, so didn't seem like a lot happened, but if you'll notice the icons changed and it's got this lightning bolt inside of it, you can see that text field is now called text field one. And if I just deselect off, you can see that the icon has actually got a color like a teal color. If we come over to our components fly out, you can see I've got a brand new component inside. It's called text field. It's called text field because that's the name, that, that's the thing that I named the group text field. So it just picks up the name of the group. And I've now got my component. I can double click on my component inside of the fly out and I can go into this special components view. So now I'm inside the component and I can do stuff inside of components. Components are kind of little, little black boxes of magic that you can put things in and you can kind of create interactions and they're all self-contained inside and they just magically work, which is pretty cool. You can see this also picks up this teal color, which is the same color. And you can see that it's, a, it's effectively kept my layer structure as it was inside of the group. A component has its own triggers panel, so you can put all your own triggers and responses in. And it's also got its own variables panel, so it's got a special variable that you can only use inside of your components. Okay, so that's the, have a look deep inside of a component. Okay, so that's my first component. The next component I wanna make is out of my button. So again, I'm going to select the group in the layers. This time I'll right click and choose convert to component. Okay, so now I've got button one. If I click into my flyout, I can see I've now got a button component. Okay, so two components. Okay, so if we just select these components in the scene, there's a few things that you can do with a component. So even though it's a component, in fact, let me just show you how to use components. So I can drag components out of my flyout. So I can just drag this button component and I've now got another component. Now we call these component instances. So they're an instance, which means a copy. They're a copy of the component, but they're also linked to the main component. So this, this idea of this centralized object that, that I'm making copies of. So what that means is that I can make changes inside of these instances, and those changes are gonna be unique to the instances. So for example, I can see this red button on this red background is not really working too well. So I wanna change the color. So I'm just gonna come down to the properties panel and I'm gonna change it to a blue color. Okay, so you can now see that my button two now has a blue color, but it's still connected to my master component, my main component inside of my components flyout. I might want to go in and make a global change across multiple components. If I wanna do that, then I'm gonna go into the master component here. And let's say, for example, I might want to Let's go into the text and we're going to range it left instead. So let's align it left. So it's now on the left hand side. If I now step out of this component, come back to my scene, you can see that both instances have picked up that change. And you can make changes at the global level as long as you haven't changed them in the instances. So for example, if I go back into my component and maybe I want to change the background color to another color. So let's change it from red to black. And we're going to step out of that component. Now you can see that the top button has changed color, but the bottom hasn't changed color. And that's because we had already changed the color of this particular button at the instance level. And we call those changes overrides. So as soon as you override a property in the instance, you lose the ability to change it globally. But fear not, there is a way around it. If you did want to pick up that global change, you can right click your component instance and you can choose reset overrides. This will reset every single overridden object, but if I reset overrides, I can effectively reset it back to its original state and you can see now it's turned black. So let's just go back into our button and just revert those changes. So we'll just make that text centered and I'm just going to change the button color back to red and come back to my main scene. Okay, so we're back to the way we were. So 
any so basically you can change lots of properties inside of components so anything that's accessible you can change so i can change um let's just select that um i can change all of these values the the position in the scene um i can change the size the rotation the origin all of the const i can override all of the constraints so there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do here which makes components really really flexible you can really give them a unique look while still keeping them connected to the main component okay so let's just delete this instance for a second i want to go back to these components so if i can also open the component in the layers panel so i can just twizzle down this disclosure triangle and you can see i can get access to the internal subparts of the component so if i click on this input one and i come over to the properties panel you can see a couple of things first first off you can see there's a lot of stuff that's been disabled so when you're dealing with nested objects of a component your options of overriding and changing stuff is a little bit more limited there are still some things that you can change depending on what the layer type is whether it's an input field a text layer or a regular shape but you can also still make some overrides here okay so that's quite cool that you can get to the insides of your component and make some overrides there as well you can see here on the button I've selected the text layer and again I've got the ability to change the font change the the alignment change the color change a whole bunch of stuff cool okay so you can you can see that um, components are really flexible really useful you can just duplicate a component in the scene you don't have to go to the menu I've now got a new component and you can reuse your components in this way just to help you speed up when you're creating your prototypes okay so let's get off and finally you know finalize this this component because something else I want to show you so I've got these two components and I actually want to make the whole dialog box a component as well so and I but I've got these two components inside of my dialog box so one of the cool things about protopy is you can actually have nested components so I'm going to select the whole dialog box I'm going to tap component and now my whole dialog box is a component if I look inside, I can see it's got my text field and it's got my two sub components and then I can twizzle down those and still get to all of those objects as well. So this is a really good way of modularizing your UI. So you can make sub components or nested components, whatever you want to call them, and you can slowly build your UI up to it in an atomic level. So you can make lots of buttons and radio buttons and inputs and all those some smaller pieces of UI but you can bring them together in larger pieces of UI and reuse those as well cool so I've now got my dialog box I can duplicate that and now I've got two dialog boxes I can override the dialog boxes color for example and I can make it a different looking dialog box I can also override the text so let's just change the color here and I can type in some other text don't forget the capital so there you go it's quite amazing what you can do with components in protopia this is one half of what you can do as you can imagine this is quite close to what you can do in those aforementioned tools and we're going to be looking in a future lesson and out at how you can actually add interaction inside of your components and control that at a component level Okay, so this about wraps up this lesson looking at components inside of Protopy, and I'll see you in the next lesson.